Today I'll be traveling through all the Pokemon games to shiny hunt the rarest legendary Pokemon in 300 hours, which is a very long time. Nearly every legendary Pokemon was introduced in the Scarlet and Violet Indigo Disc DLC, but unlike previous titles, they were all shiny locked. So to complete my shiny legendary collection, I'll have to return to past games and hunt them down, but it wasn't going to be easy. Even though I've caught over 400 shiny Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet, they are still extremely rare with a 1 in 4096 chance of appearing, different color from regular Pokemon, and even sparkle when you encounter them. With over 20 of the rarest legendary Pokemon to shiny hunt, I started to wonder if 300 hours would even be enough to complete this challenge. So here's how it's gonna work. In Pokemon Scarlet and Violet's DLC, the Indigo Disc, these 25 legendary Pokemon were added. To get around this lock, I'd have to find the best games and most optimal methods to shiny hunt every single one of them. Three of these 25 legendary Pokemon, Glastria, Spectria, and Kubfu, have never had their shiny forms released, so they have to come off the list. The remaining 22 legendary Pokemon were all available to shiny hunt in older Pokemon games, so let's begin. The easiest place to start this challenge, or so I thought, was in the Generation 8 games Pokemon Sword and Shield, specifically in its Crown Tundra DLC. Here you could find Dynamax Adventures, a side quest feature that let you hunt legendary Pokemon from past Pokemon games. Out of the 38 that were available, Available here, I needed 22 for this shiny challenge. It seemed like the perfect place to begin. I was fortunate enough to have a save on my copy of Pokemon Shield, which I'd already complete the main story and hadn't caught any of the legendary Pokemon I needed. I went straight to the max lair and started my first Dynamax Adventure raid of this hunt. Now here's where things get tricky. In Dynamax Adventures, every new run, a random legendary boss is chosen from the available pool of legendaries and ultra beasts available in the game. The odds of encountering the exact one I needed were around 46%. Despite this, the shiny odds in these raids are some of the best found in any Pokemon game at 1 in 300. Plus, once I encountered a legendary I wanted, I could save the route to keep hunting it. After a few initial runs, I got lucky and found Lugia one of the legendary targets I needed starting my first shiny hunt of this challenge. Each run took around 12 minutes to complete since you have to battle three regular Dynamax Pokemon before getting to the legendary boss. This part wasn't the most efficient method, especially because you don't know if a Pokemon is shiny until the very end summary screen, and that's only if you beat and catch the Pokemon throughout the raid. At this point, I was averaging around 5 Lugia encounters per hour, so for us to hit full odds in this hunt, it would take roughly 60 hours to do. Yikes. I spent the rest of that night hunting with Shiny Lugia still to show up and was also yet to phase after 30 encounters with no bonus shinies in sight. Despite the slow start to this challenge, I was eager to make some better progress the next day. And after a few hours into the hunt, our first shiny of the challenge showed up, but maybe not how I expected it to. The NPCs in these raids are so bad. I can't believe we've just failed the Lugia. Such a waste of 15 minutes. Oh. I guess the game felt sorry for us. Shiny Clang. <laughs> That's kind of nice. Okay. Another drawback to Dynamax Adventure Raids was that you could quite easily fail to beat the legendary Pokemon at the end. If you do, then of course you don't get the summary screen encounter and essentially you waste however long that run took. Due to the fact of having to use rental Pokemon to battle alongside NPCs who actually never use the most optimal moves, Every run can really turn into a disaster. With phasing in our first hunt aside, I went on a pretty decent running streak after this, but without any shiny Pokemon showing up. Although only a few hours later and way under odds, this happened. Okay, that is number 60, yeah, encounter number 66 for Lugia. So at least we didn't fail that one. Should we just check the summary screen and then we can go through them a little bit better. So no shiny for number one. Ilelesk, nope. Beware. And Lugia. There it is! There it is! Shiny Lugia! 66 encounters. That's absolutely insane. 66. I can't believe it. That's such a grind, but we got it so under odds. That's crazy. We haven't even got the shiny charm in this game yet. 1 in 300 odds. 66 encounters. Oh my god, it looks so good in this game as well. Manage. We have to take it. Selected, selected, selected. Do not miss it. Awesome. <laughs> First one down of the challenge. Shiny Lugia. With one legendary down, I now had 21 left to catch. Getting Shiny Lugia had taken me almost 15 hours in total, which honestly wasn't that bad. 
but this look wouldn't last. And I didn't like the thought of our next hunt potentially taking 60 plus hours. I mean, if I average that for all 21 remaining legendaries I needed, that would take 1,260 hours. That's like 52 days. With that in mind, it was probably worth completing my Pokemon Shield Pokedex to get the Shiny Charm. The Shiny Charm item, for those of you who don't know, was introduced in Pokemon Black 2 and White 2 and has appeared in every mainline Pokemon title since. When obtained, this item drastically reduces the base shiny odds of wild Pokemon from 1 in 4096 to 1 in 1365. In Pokemon Sword and Shield, the Shiny Charm also affected Pokemon in Dynamax Adventure Age, reducing the odds of Pokemon encountered from 1 in 300 to an incredible 1 in 100. So rather than 60 hours to reach full odds on a specific hunt, it would be more like 20. Although still a very long time, this was a massive improvement. To help speed things up, I transferred a lot of Pokemon I needed from Pokemon Home to register in my Pokemon Shield Pokedex, and then collected the remaining ones I was missing through normal gameplay, which only took me a couple of hours in total. With the Pokedex complete, I took a trip to Surchester and was awarded the Shiny Charm. Now with the improved 1 in 100 Shiny Odds, our next encounter was Lunala. Sword and Shield were the first games where players had been able to shiny hunt this Pokemon since its release in Generation 7. Feeling a little more confident after getting this upgrade, I set off on our next shiny hunt. Despite having improved odds, I was already 10 hours into this hunt, with 41 checks for Lunala done. Each run was taking around the same 10 to 12 minutes as Lugia, and not every run was successful, but hunting here was such a long process. Even with the great odds, the amount of encounters per hour ratio didn't feel great. Also, with so many legendaries to get before sinking any more time into this, I decided to shelve Lunala and look at some other options. And this brings us on to the Nintendo 3DS system and its collection of Pokemon games. The Generation 7 games Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon were a lot like Pokemon Sword and Shield's DLC, having a side quest feature called Ultra Wormholes, which was available in its post-game having a lot of legendary Pokemon to catch. 18 of the 44 total available were ones I needed for this challenge, so naturally this felt like a good next place to start. Thankfully in my Ultra Sun save, I had already obtained the Shiny Charm, giving all Pokemon I encountered here a shiny odds of 1 in 1365. On top of this, the legendary hunts in these games had encounters that were also extremely quick. To find legendary Pokemon in Ultra Wormholes, you ride Sogaleo or Lunala into Ultra Space, collecting orange orbs to boost your speed while avoiding blue ones that slow you down. You can reach rarer wormholes that contain these legendaries the farther you can travel. So essentially, the principles of this were pretty easy. Ugh. Dang. There are five different wormhole colors, and each one has its own set of unique Pokemon and legendaries you can find. So after familiarizing myself with its mechanics, I eventually found a wormhole that contained Ho-Oh, which was kind of fitting seeing as Lugia was the first shiny legendary of this challenge, hunting its generation 2 counterpart as a second was kind of nice. Using the reset method, I could hit around 180 encounters on average every hour, and although the shiny odds weren't as good as Dynamax Adventure Raids, more encounters essentially meant more chances of getting a shiny. Saving in front of the encounter spot for Ho-Oh, I began the shiny hunt which instantly felt so much better than the hunts in Pokemon Shield. Just getting 3 encounters per minute opposed to the 5 per hour felt great. And you wouldn't believe it, not even 3 hours later into this hunt, the shiny phoenix rose from the ashes on encounter number 529 to get our second shiny legendary of this challenge. Oh, shiny ho, shiny ho, that's insane. That's so quick, we've only just started hunting in this game. Shiny ho, looks so good. Come on, come on, come on. One, two, three. Let's go, we got it. Shiny ho, after 529 encounters, so under odds as well. That's so crazy under odds, that's amazing. And it looks so good. It looks so good. I can't believe it. There it is. Number two done. The battle only took 30 minutes. Nearly half as long as it actually took to find the shiny. But now just 20 shiny legendary Pokemon to go. This challenge was off to a great start. Ignoring Lunala of course. Getting both Lugia and Ho-Oh so quick and so under odds was great. But I had a feeling not every hunt in this challenge would work out so well. The next day I went after the Kanto birds. Articuno, Moltres and Zapdos. Although not the best shiny Pokemon, they are still some of the most iconic legendaries in the franchise. Red wormholes were my target once again, and it wasn't long before I eventually located a wormhole for our next legendary hunt, Articuno. 
although not as quick as Ho-Oh, Otakuna did make me work for it. But still appearing well under odds after 5 hours of hunting on encounter 892. Shiny Otakuno! No! We got it! I mean, it doesn't look that much different. It's still, we got the shiny. That's all that matters. Think of five hours we've been doing this. 892 encounters. That's crazy. That's that's quite a long time. Um, But still under odds, so really good. Shiny Articuno, awesome to get. Moltres was our next target, and our luck continued. As shortly after finding its encounter wormhole, it shined on check number 448. No! <laughs> Moltres! Shiny Moltres! No way! Shiny Moltres! That's crazy again, so quick. So much under odds. That's insane. That's insane. It looks so good. It's 100% the best Kanto shiny bird by far. I can't believe it. The first time I've ever got a shiny Moltres in any Pokemon game. It looks so, so good. Okay, we've got like one love ball in this game, so we're going to try it. Let's see if we can, we can get in a love ball. It would be so fitting. Such a perfect ball for it. One, one shake course no more pink balls but a premier ball, premier ball feels feels like it would be a good one to get it in let's see one two two three let's go let's go let's go shiny moltres the 448 encounters that's crazy under odds so that's so good if every hunt in the ultra wormholes went like this i felt we'd have all 22 shiny legendaries for this challenge locked up in no time but then there was zapdos I said it before, I thought my luck would eventually catch up to me. And Zapdos definitely gave us a friendly reminder of just how that can work. The next day, for the first time in this challenge, we passed full odds calling it a night after a full 9 hour hunt, ending on 1,602 encounters. I picked it up the next morning, even dual hunting Lunala for a few hours in Dynamax Adventure Raids to try and end this drought. By this point into the hunt, I was also getting paranoid that I'd reset over the shiny mainly because we were getting so close to two times over odds and how subtle Zapdos' shiny looked. I mean, look at it. Is there even any difference at all? Even though I was laser focused on my 3DS screen, this drive continued for the entire day on both games, leaving us on 3,197 encounters for Zapdos and 49 checks for Lunala. It was a few days before I came back to this hunt to save myself from complete burnout and also due to content and streaming commitments. When I did return, the shiny gods must have been feeling sorry for me as three hours into the Zapdos hunt on encounter 3,722, it finally appeared. Shiny Zapdos, oh my god, looks nothing, no different than the regular Zapdos. How would I even have known if I hadn't, I don't think if I hadn't seen that sparkle there, I would have noticed it. I, re I, I promise, like that is so subtle. I can't believe this has been such a long hunt. Okay, that only took 15 minutes to do. That was nerve wracking as heck, but we've got shiny Zapdos finally. That was the longest hunt so far, 3,722 encounters. This hunt was the most difficult so far, but with all the Kanto birds now done alongside ho -Oh and Lugia, I had ticked off a good chunk of the legendaries I needed from generations 1 and 2, although there were still three I had to come back to hunt later. During the grind for Zapdos, I realized how much more efficient dual hunting could be in this challenge. With two systems, I could double my encounters and speed up the process. But unfortunately, I only had one 3DS at the time, which left me tied to Dynamax Adventures and my Switch. I also had a copy of Ultra Moon that I could use to hunt, but for now, I was still stuck at this slower pace. My next hunt was a bit sporadic over the following week as I traveled to cast a regional event for the video game championships in Dortmund. I didn't capture much footage since I was traveling light, but still wanted to make progress during any downtime between rehearsals and the event itself. Staying consistent though, even while on the road felt important to keep track with this challenge. Groudon was my next target, although I didn't have much time during the event, managed to squeeze in a good number of resets in my hotel room after show days. Surprisingly, this shiny appeared pretty quickly compared to the previous hunt, and apologies for the footage quality. I only had my iPhone at hand to capture this. Groudon shone just after 785 resets, bringing us back under rods, but the real challenge came during this battle, which lasted nearly 40 minutes before I finally caught it. Honestly, I thought this might be our first shiny fail of the challenge, but thankfully that wasn't going to happen just yet. While in Dortmund, I had the idea I wasn't satisfied with just completing this challenge using one or two games. I wanted at least one hunt that would make it really special. Since I was already hunting the Generation 3 legendaries, 
The thought of shiny hunting Rayquaza in the generation it first appeared in, Pokemon Emerald, really appealed to me. Out of all of the legendaries, shiny Rayquaza is probably one of my favorites, and catching one from Emerald would be a true trophy for my collection. But there was one problem. I had already caught Rayquaza in my current copy of Pokemon Emerald, which left me with two options. Either spend a ton of money on a second copy of the game, or start a fresh playthrough. And as you can imagine, after a quick look at the listings on eBay, I opted for the playthrough. Rayquaza was available to catch in Emerald after stopping Kyogre and Groudon in Sutopolis City before the Elite Four, so it shouldn't take too long to do. When I got home, I had another surprise waiting for me. After dual hunting sessions with Zapdos and Lunala, and how much more efficient hunting in two games was, I went ahead and ordered another 3DS console. The first thing I did was use copies of Pokemon Sun, Moon, and Ultra Sun to complete the Pokedex and Ultra Moon, so I could get the Shiny Charm, which surprisingly only took a few hours. Although Kyogre would have been the natural next target after Shiny Groudon and starting the Rayquaza quest in Emerald, I ended up shifting focus. While in Ultra Sun, I stumbled upon a wormhole that had Terrakion from the Swords of Justice trio. And it just felt right to hunt Terrakion, Cobalion, and Verizion together, so I used my newly completed Ultra Moon copy to tackle them simultaneously. Now with two games set up, not only was I able to double the number of encounters per hour, but I was also saving a lot of time. Since not every legendary I needed could be found in Ultra Sun, I would eventually have to move over to Ultra Moon to catch Latias, Kyogre, Entei, and Zekrom, the remaining four version exclusives I needed for this challenge. The first of the trio to shine was Verizian and Ultra Moon copy, 1162 encounters, and still a little under odds. Oh, Verizian, shiny Verizian. Oh my gosh, it's, it's we got it already. That's quick, that was quick. Not as quick as some of the other ones, but very... Ah, oh, it looks so good. It looks so... I can't, can't believe it. Oh, it looks so good. There we go. We got it. Verizian caught shiny Verizian after 1,162 encounters. It's a pretty, pretty good amount of counters, but still under odds. So we will take that. While setting up the next hunt for Cobalion, I ended up going over odds with Terrakion and ended the night on 1,433 encounters. I look continued into the next day with Terrakion shining only a couple of hours in. Tiny Terrakion, 1,622 encounters, shiny Terrakion. We got it, we got it, we got it, we got it. That's two of the Swords of Justice down. That's awesome. I love shiny Terrakion, it looks so good. It's crazy as well, because I got shiny Terrakion in Pokemon Go recently, and it looks so good. I love it. I love it. Never hunt Shiny Trachyon in any Pokemon game before. So again, a little bit like the Moltres, we finally got it. Come on, Trachyon, just get in the ball. Come on, two, of course. Ah, oh, again. Okay, let's try another Premier Ball. See if this one, oh! Critical catch. Let's go. We got the Terrakion. There we are. It's done. Done and dusted. That battle was a grueling battle. That was... What was that? Like 30 minutes it's taken us to get Terrakion. 30 minutes. Oh, man. That was brutal. Finally done. 1,621 encounters for Terrakion. One more to go. And as Cobalion was our last Swords of Justice legendary we needed, I stayed on the black and white theme, setting a hunt up for Zekrom in Ultra Moon. And before finishing up for the night, Cobalion finally appeared on 962 encounters. Oh, shiny Cobalion! It showed up. It didn't even take too long. That's crazy. That's crazy. So much quicker than the Terrakion. Cobalion got in 962 encounters. That was brutal. We got it way under odds, but that battle was scary. With nine of the 22 shiny legendaries caught, I was almost halfway through the challenge, but I knew there was still a long road ahead. After the previous hunts had taken around 15 hours to do, I decided to switch things up the next day since I had finally got to the sky pillar in Pokemon Emerald. It was finally time to begin the hunt for shiny Rayquaza. Shiny hunting in Pokemon Emerald is a lot more challenging compared to other games due to the way the random number generator or RNG for short works. Essentially, Emerald has issues with its seed generation, which determines how shiny Pokemon spawn, and as a result, players can't use traditional soft resetting methods for shiny hunting in these games. 
So for this hunt, like Rayquaza, the only reliable option was the runaway method. This meant after encountering Rayquaza, if it wasn't shiny, I'd have to run from the battle. Rayquaza would disappear, and then I need to exit and re-enter the area to respawn it, repeating this process over and over until it shined. Not only was this really time consuming, but the shiny odds were much worse in these older games at 1 in 8192 with no shiny charm or methods to improve them like in the modern titles. After a full day of doing nothing but encountering, running away and repeating, I had seen Rayquaza 801 times. I was not even a tenth of the way to full odds yet and that might sound like decent progress but this was after 9 straight hours of hunting. To put in perspective, if I average just 90 encounters per hour, at this pace it would take me around 91 hours just to reach full odds. While it wasn't the slowest legendary shiny hunting method, I was definitely feeling the grind. So to keep things fresh, I decided to go back to Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon where I'd set up hunts for both Reshiram and Zekrom. The main reason I wanted to shiny hunt both of these legendaries together was I needed them both to complete this challenge and also because having both in your party would unlock Curum in the Ultra Wormholes, allowing me to eventually tick off all the Generation 5 legendary Pokemon. Reshiram was the first of the two to show up over odds later that week on 1,643 encounters. <sighs> shiny Reshiram! We got it! We got it! Oh! No way! Oh, this has been worse just over odds, and we've locked it in. Oh, it looks so good. The white and the gold looks amazing. The red eyes as well. The red eyes, white dragon. I love it. I love it. That's so good. Oh, <laughs> we got it. We got the shiny restroom. Oh, this felt like a slog, but I guess just over odds isn't too bad at all. all. Right, let's ultra ball it. Let's see if we can lock it in finally. We've been going for a while, but one of them's got to go. One, two, and three. Let's go. Let's go. Shiny Reshiram got in 1,643 encounters. Not too bad at all, but what a shiny. It looks absolutely amazing. I love Shiny Reshiram. It's got to be definitely, when I look at it, up there is one of my favorites. I'm so happy that we finally got this one. So we're closer to getting that Curum hunt underway. We just need to get the Zekrom now, now that we have the Reshiram. There also seemed to be a pattern with me and electric type Pokemon, as the hunt for Zekrom just seemed to continue. My thinking was to break the curse, there only seemed like one logical thing to do, and that was to introduce another electric legendary Pokemon to this hunt. Raikou was our next hunt, but after it, I'd still need Entei and Suicune to complete this legendary beast trio. Although these Generation 2 Pokemon were available to shiny hunt in many other Pokemon games, the quickest way to obtain them, in my opinion, was in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. The shiny odds in Dynamax Adventures are the lowest at 1 in 100 when maxed out, but at best you'd be getting around 6 encounters for these Pokemon an hour, meaning hitting odds would still take over 16 hours with no guarantees. Comparing this to Ultra Wormhole hunts with their 1 in 1365 base shiny rates, and how quick the resets and encounters are, hitting shiny odds could be done in a little over 7 hours. It was seriously a no-brainer for me to stay in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon to get these legendaries done as quick as possible. This was not a great day though. I don't know if it was just down to burnout from content, attending live events, all this challenge, but I started to get really sick and was struggling to continue this hunt. In hindsight, I should have quit a lot sooner than I did. If I had, maybe this wouldn't have happened. Shiny Raikou! Shiny Raikou! No way! Oh, we got it! We got it! Oh my gosh, Shiny Raikou, 663 encounters, that's so good. Oh, that looks so nice as well. I love Shiny Raikou, it looks amazing. Okay, Ultra Ball it, another Ultra Ball, let's see if this one will get it. One, two, oh, again, it's going to wake up as well, oh, of course it wakes up, one turn sleep. We just need to spore it again, and then we can then ultra ball it. But we've, we're kind of low on spores at this stage, so I think we've got one more after this. Hopefully the next couple of ultra balls, if it stays asleep, we'll be able to get it. One, oh, not even one shake, not even one shake, and it wakes up again. Another first turn wake up, that's so frustrating. 
at least the discharge misses us so we avoid the paralysis but now we're gonna have to use our last spawn hope that it stays asleep it gets a longer sleep turn this is this is brutal okay another spawn no 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 oh no <laughs> what have i done why did i hit the run button oh my god oh my god i can't believe i just did that this was my first shiny fail of the challenge and first shiny fail period in my defense i was feeling pretty awful not only about running away from the raikou but how genuinely ill i was at the time I still don't really know what was going through my head to press the runaway button, but after that episode, I powered everything down and was laid up in bed for the next few days. Once fully recovered, I resumed this cursed electric legendary hunt and managed to reclaim the Raikou after only a few hours, getting it after 413 resets. We got it back, shiny Raikou! It, it's back! We've reclaimed it! Oh my gosh, oh my gosh! I thought it would take us absolutely forever to get Raikou in this game again after the fail. We fin finally got it. Finally got it. 413 encounters to get Shiny Raikou. So that was after failing it, of course, the first time. So hopefully this time, just quick ball it. Imagine if we get it here. One, two, three oh let's go let's not mess around <laughs> so many times in that first time after we failed it we'd spore it it would wake first time wake up and then we'd spore it again and not feeling well at the time and it just not going in an ultra ball i think i we were just in a spin anyway so to get it back in 413 encounters let's go raikou done the electric curse hopefully is half lifted now and then we can just to concentrate on Zekrom going forward. It's kind of sad to say, but at this point in the challenge, with 11 legendaries still left to shiny hunt, I wasn't feeling great that this would be the last fail we'd see. The next day, after taking things a little easier, the day before, I resumed the Zekrom hunt, which was now at 3,492 encounters, nearly three times over odds. But rather than start a new hunt in Ultra Sun, I decided to double down on the Rayquaza hunt in Emerald. We were two days on and still going while I was losing my sanity. And although there was a huge difference in the shiny odds between the two hunts, everything pointed towards us getting Zekrom first as we were getting close to three times over odds for it. But on our 1809th check for Rayquaza, this happened. <gasps> shiny Rayquaza! No way! Shiny Rayquaza! We've got, we've got it! No way! <laughs> no way! No way! I didn't expect this is so quick so quick oh my god oh my god oh my god i'm shaking i'm shaking i cannot i cannot believe this <laughs> i cannot i cannot believe it i cannot believe it shiny record looks so good in pokemon emerald that is crazy we're not even gonna mess around with this we've got a master ball so we're just gonna master ball master ball it and we've got it that's 1809 checks for Rayquaza I was expecting this to go over odds I honestly I was expecting this to go way way over odds I can't believe we've got it so quick there we go we got shiny Rayquaza from Pokemon Emerald what an epic hunt always something that I've wanted to hunt and we've finally done it in getting it so under odds that is so crazy. With this, it brought a total to 12 shiny legendaries. And while I couldn't believe my luck, getting shiny Rayquaza was so under odds. It's a hunt I've always wanted to complete. Plus with the timing of this hunt, I can still transfer it all the way up to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. One of my biggest concerns with some of these hunts, especially in the older games, was the ability to transfer them into Pokemon Home. In early 2024, Pokemon issued a statement that Pokemon Bank and Transporters Online support would be shutting down in the near future. We still don't have an exact date for this, but with the clock ticking, players like myself are scrambling to complete shiny hunts in all the games to ensure that we can transfer them into the modern titles. As Shiny Zekrom was still dragging its feet and requires it done, I decided to set up the next hunt in Ultra Sun, this time for Latios. It was the first Lati twin to hunt in this challenge and I was eager to get it as quick as possible. Plus, it wasn't an electric type, so I figured we'd have better luck this time, right? I couldn't have been more wrong. 
This hunt was just as cursed as the Zekrom one and dragged on for over a week and a half, but in all fairness, I was maybe only getting around three to four hours of resets done every evening, as repeating the same hunt like this one was not so much fun. For the first time, these hunts were making me question if starting this challenge was actually a good thing to do. But then, yo, there it is, shiny Latios. We got it. Finally, this one is taking such a long time. Ah, it looks so good. Oh, man. That looks so good. Oh, I can't believe it. Yes. Shiny Latios. That green. Oh, man. Okay, let's try try a Premier Ball. It's deciding it doesn't want to go on Ultra Ball, so Premier Ball. Let's see. Can we get it? Can we get it? I still can't believe that we've got three there we go there it is shiny latios 2647 encounters that was a huge grind for that one but so worth it look at it it looks so good shiny latios got there it was green shiny latios one of the latty twins done and now only nine shiny legendaries to go as ekron was quickly becoming one of my longest hunts ever it started causing more problems than just the frustration of not finding the shiny. It was holding up my progress on Curum, along with the remaining vision exclusives I needed from Ultra Moon. I began thinking of ways to keep things moving without going back to Dynamax Adventures just yet. Their shiny odds are great, but they are far too slow for the momentum I want to keep in this challenge. Then something hit me. Curum. There's a bit of a fan theory surrounding this Pokemon, with many people believing it was meant to be shiny locked in Pokemon Black and White. But due to some oversight or coding error, shiny hunting Curum remained possible. Whether the theory is true or not, the fact that you can hunt it adds a certain mystical quality to the challenge, and I like the idea of taking on another really difficult shiny hunt. I know it's a bold move at this stage of the challenge, but the idea of adding another special and rare time-consuming hunt was actually really appealing to me. Plus, there's just something satisfying about catching a shiny legendary from its original game. And Curum in Pokemon Black and White is the perfect candidate for that. In Black and White, the shiny odds sit at 1 in 8192. And there's no shiny charm to improve your chances. Some of you might be wondering why not hunt Curum in Black 2 and White 2 with the shiny charm to boost those odds. And while that would be faster, those technically aren't Curum's original games. Besides, my save files for Black 2 and White 2 are nowhere near Pokedex completion, so it'd actually take longer to set up the Shiny Charm in those games than just starting the hunt in my Pokemon Black, where Curum has never been caught. And honestly, this entire challenge has been about pushing through difficult hunts, so why not add another Legendary from its native game to make this challenge even more special? So with that, I head straight to the Giant's Chasm in Pokemon Black, drop a save, and send myself into a whole new world of pain. Good pain. This would be good pain, I think. And the resets for Kirin weren't as bad as I initially thought they would be, with each reset taking on average about 30 seconds, so essentially I was getting 120 encounters per hour. Not bad, but hitting full odds would only take roughly 68 hours at this rate. That's fine. That aside, I was making steady progress on the Kirin encounters, but the Zekrom hunt was becoming a serious grind. After another 39 hours of hunting and hitting 7,362 encounters, which was a ridiculous five times over the shiny odds, I couldn't help but start doubting myself. Zekrom's shiny form is so subtle that it's easy to miss, and with each encounter looking almost identical to the last, I began to question if I'd somehow overlooked it. Every reset brought a new wave of uncertainty. It's not like I wasn't paying attention, but shiny Zekrom was one of those Pokemon that, unless you're hyper-focused, can easily slip by unnoticed. With the sheer number of encounters piling up, I found myself second-guessing whether I'd missed it hours ago. But just when I thought the hunt would never end on encounter number 7363, the impossible happened. Shiny Zekrom! No way! We got it! We got it! Oh my god! <laughs> It looks exactly the same as regular Zekrom. It's got the tiniest green tip to the headpiece. And its eyes are a different color. Oh my gosh. I can't believe it. This has been the longest hunt ever. Probably my longest hunt I've ever done. This is absolutely insane that we've got it. Oh my gosh. I'm so pleased it's over. Well, it's not over. It's not over. 
The battle that followed was very nerve-wracking. It stretched on for almost 30 minutes, and after everything I'd been through with this hunt, I wasn't about to take any chances, so I decided just to use my Master Ball. But we can make it over. We have a Master Ball. Let's just use our Master Ball. That's like five times over odds. I think we've been at this almost 40 hours, this specific hunt, and it looks no different to the regular form. But very nice to have it anyway. Chinese Zekrom done. In total, it took nearly 40 hours of hunting to get this shiny Zekrom, but it was finally caught and added to our list, ticked off for this challenge. After being so lucky with the earlier hunts, going five times over odds here was pretty brutal and a little bit of a reality check, but it made the victory that much sweeter. Still, with how subtle the shiny is, if it wasn't for the shiny sparkles, I think I'd honestly have missed it altogether. Now that Ultra Moon was finally free after the Zekrom hunt, I could shift my focus to the version exclusives I still needed for this challenge. After such a long grind with Zekrom, I think the game decided to give me a bit of a break. While setting up Kyogre, something absolutely crazy happened. So we got shiny Kyogre. I was setting up the wormhole hunt and found the wormhole where Kyogre was. I was just getting myself positioned in front of the save point and I thought we'll check it. We'll check the first Kyogre that we go into and I'm not recording at this point because I'm just setting up the hunt and I go into the first encounter and there there it is. Shiny Kyogre on one encounter. Would you could you even believe it? I've never had this happen to me ever before. This is just so nuts. Um, so shiny Kyogre, very quick. No time to really talk about the shiny hunt, but the pink is great. I love it. And like my favorite, my favorite legendaries, probably of all time. I, I talk about Rayquaza being probably one of my favorites along with Lugia, but the primal Kyogre and primal Groudon are just incredible shiny. So I, I hope someday we get the primal forms back and it's kind of nice to have shiny Kyogre added to the collection, especially for this challenge as well. There it is, in a dive ball. Encounters, one. One encounter. We'll take more of those, please. My very first encounter, it's Sean. Of course, in true fashion, I wasn't recording. Typical, right? But still, Shiny Kyogre was mine, and just like that, I had 15 Shiny Legendaries down, with seven more to go. Now I'll continue in the Curum hunt in Pokemon Black, which was steadily climbing at 326 encounters. There was one more target in Ultra Moon, the second of the Latti twins I needed to get, Latias. Having already caught Shiny Latios, I was eager to complete this duo. The Lati Twins are some of the most iconic legendaries in the Horn region, and there's just something special about their sleek designs and the vibrant orange hue on Shiny Latias. I started hunting Latias while doing Curum on the side, but honestly, part of me was just wondering if I'd used up all my Shiny luck on Kyogre. You know how it goes with these hunts, the Shiny odds have to be balanced. And despite my recent luck, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was due for another long grind. But that couldn't be further from the truth, as we were able to finish the day off in the best way possible. <gasps> Shiny Latias! Ah, oh, it looks so pretty. It looks so nice. Oh, the Latti Shinies are the best. I can't believe it. Shiny Latias. We got it so quick as well. This hunt did not take any. I mean, after Kyogre, everything is going to feel like a long time. But this was this was seriously quick. Locked in. There we are. There it is. Shiny Latias. That's incredible. 719 encounters. Pretty quick. Well under odds. And that is the Latti Twins done now. It looks so good. One of the nicest looking shiny legendaries with 16 shiny legendaries down and just six to go the end of this massive challenge was slowly coming into focus but i knew there was still some tough hunts ahead with all the legendaries from generation 3 complete i went back to finish up the final two generation 2 legendary beasts first before i could unlock suicune though i needed to get Ente. one of the biggest challenges with ultra wormholes is actually finding the specific legendary you're after out of the 21 available legendaries in my copy of ultra moon I had roughly about a 5% chance of encountering Entai each time I went into a new run. But it's not just that. Rarer wormholes, the ones that guarantee a legendary encounter, only have a 1% chance of appearing once you've traveled at least 2,500 light years in ultra space. That chance, of course, increases to 5% when you hit 4,500 light years. Getting there consistently requires you a lot of patience and skill, both of which I have neither. Oh. 
Blue Rainbow Wormhole. Get... Oh, come on. How have I missed it again? I got to full odds the next day with the Entai and Ultra Moon whilst continuing Kurum Hunt and Pokemon Black, hitting 803 encounters. But as repetitive as these resets were becoming, I still felt pretty optimistic with this challenge considering we were only a handful of legendaries off hitting our remaining targets. No! Oh! I just reset over it. I just reset over it. Oh no. I can't believe that. I was locked in. This one really hurt. My second fail of the challenge and a huge setback, especially when we're so far on in the challenge. Try not to think about this one too much though. I still can't believe that we reset over Ente. I cannot believe it. I've got a band around my L button and every time I've been going to reset it, it's slipping. So I have to actually put it back on and then reset properly. Why couldn't the one time, literally the one time when the shiny turns up, couldn't it have slipped off? Every other time it slipped off, not this time. Oh, I'm so gutted about shiny Entar. How long is it going to take us to reclaim? I can't believe it's the second time we've done this in the challenge. Thankfully, the next day on encounter 1206, I was able to reclaim Entar and finally add it to the collection. One, <laughs> we got it back. We got it back. That took so long to reclaim it, but we finally got it. Finally. Right, no, no resetting over it. No running from it. Let's just get this. Let's quick ball it. Quick ball it. Please. Just lock it in. I don't want a long battle. Thanks. And there it is. Shiny Ente reclaimed after resetting over the first one. We've got it back after 1,206 encounters. So in total... We're looking at like 2,000 encounters. Now with both Shiny Ente and Raikou Cord, I could go for the last remaining Shiny in these games, Suicune. Wait, both of these I failed. I hope this isn't a premonition for what's about to happen with Suicune. I was still continuing resets for Kurum alongside all of these Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon hunts, but this wasn't showing any signs of showing up anytime soon. Surprisingly, unlike the other two legendary beasts, Suicune decided to show up quite early on though in its hunt. That was so quick! Shiny Suicune! 427 encounters! 427 encounters Shiny Suicune has popped up. We've got all the legendary beasts now. That's crazy. That is crazy. Let's go. Let's go. This battle's been going for 30 minutes. We couldn't deciding it just wants to be stubborn, not get in the ball. Oh, not even one shake. Again, it's just so stubborn. It won't go in. Let's try a dust ball. One, two, three. Probably the most unsuitable ball for it. But regardless of that, 427 encounters. Got it very early and we've we've done it we can tick it off the list now suicune got ah oh, that battle was a grind after only 427 encounters this one was actually well under rods which took us to a total of 18 shiny legendaries and we had finished all the shiny hunts in both pokemon ultra sun and ultra moon and at this point i had to go back to the games where we started this challenge pokemon shield as you can tell by now, I wasn't the biggest fan of Dynamax Adventure Raids, but Necrozma, Sogaleo, and Lunala were only available to shiny hunt in these games, so I had no other choice but to endure the grind of these raid hunts. Even though Sogaleo was a Pokemon Sword exclusive, thankfully one of our kind community members hosted a Sogaleo raid on stream, which I was able to join and then save the route in my copy of Pokemon Shield. I kicked off the hunt for Sogaleo live on stream and continued the grind off it, only to end up getting all sorts of random shinies along the way, just none of them Sogaleo. Nice! Shiny Magma! That's pretty nice! No shiny Sogaleo, but shiny Magma. Nice bonus shiny. That's our first phase in this Sogaleo hunt. Let's check the shinies. Are we going to get Sogaleo? Can we get it nice and early? The trio, Lipod. Lampent. Nah, oh, nice. Shiny Lampent. Nice. That's a nice shiny to get. That is a super nice shiny. Uh, so I get a lot of... I get... Oh, the shiny Mopico. No way. That is amazing. The first one. That is great. Okay, let's go, chat. Let's go. 
That's a really good one. Okay, so that's a consolation. Do we get anything else though? No. Okay. After getting to 32 encounters that night, I decided to call it there. I spent the majority of the next day hunting Sogaleo alongside Kurum, but nothing showed up with our totals now at 64 encounters for Sogaleo and 2,921 for Kurum. The next time I picked up these hunts a week later for Sogaleo, I definitely felt like the shiny gods were shining down on us as I managed to find the shiny red lion on our 77th encounter. Complete, let's do the mandatory summary screen see if we've got the shiny this time around eat more flareon no a barrage yeah. <gasps> no way we got no way we got <laughs> shiny Solgaleo. yes come on look at it <laughs> looks so so good oh my gosh oh man this has been crazy honestly thought we'd been doing these raids for so long it was never gonna happen i can't believe it let's go select that bad boy and let's move on the red line has been claimed 77 encounters that is absolutely madness 77 encounters as the Sogaleo hunt had been a huge grind, and to make things a little more bearable, I decided to take the final two hunts in Pokemon Shield on stream. Necrozma showed up after only 44 encounters. Happy Monday, good to be back, it's been a little while. We're gonna do some uh, Dynamax adventures as well. I need to get the Necrozma. Oh look, I think we go this route. I was doing a run yesterday and it was so frustrating because um, there was a, a Bronzong on the team and I was uh, Manetric and it kept skill swapping my lightning rod off me. So then I couldn't use my electric type attacks and we had uh, Toxtricity on the team as well. And it's just like the most like awkward NPC character just absolutely sabotaging our runs. Right, let's see. Can we get this shiny Necrozma? Are we looking? No Rotom. No good luck. Baim. I wouldn't even know what Baim shiny looked like. So I'd have to check. <gasps> Chad, we got it. We got the Necrozma. Yes, we've got it. Come on. Yes, we've got the Necrozma. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. <laughs> this is epic. This is epic that we've done it on stream as well. Awesome. Awesome. We got it. We got it. Check summary. And there we go. Ah, oh, I've got one more. One more to get, and it's the Lunala. And a week later on stream on 62 encounters, we managed to finally get Lunala. Right, let's see. Have we got any shinies this time around? Or is it going to be the Lunala? Dragonair. No, Dragonair would have been a nice one to get. Alvantula, no. Uh... Oh, Chad, we got it. We got it on 62. 62 attempts. We got the Lunala. It's the last one I need for the challenge. I've got it. Oh, my God. We got it today. This is a good day. Oh, Thank goodness, let's go. Wow, we got it, I can't believe it. Oh, it's over, it's over, it's over, I got it. Oh my gosh, that is amazing, that is amazing. And I'm pleased you are all here to share this moment. Right, let's take this. You know, all full Pokemon we got from Dynamax Adventures came in under odds. So maybe I've been a little wrong about shiny hunting here all this time. Nah. That's definitely a lie. I never really want to come back to these games to shiny hunt anything ever again. But that didn't matter because 21 of our shiny legendaries caught, only one Pokemon remained, Kyurem. During the downtime of the past two weeks between streams, content and other shiny hunts, I'd been slowly working through a new playthrough on my copy of Pokemon White to set up a dual hunt for the Kyurem. To access Kyurem you need all 8 gym badges and defeat the Elite Four. This took me roughly 12 hours in total. But for our final challenge, it was worth the extra effort to double up on encounters for this hunt. I was already sitting at 3,217 encounters on my copy of Pokemon Black. The increased rate of Kyurem encounters from running both games was a nice change. But I'm going to be honest, this one was tough. For the first time, I didn't have the next hunt lined up and it made things feel a lot more repetitive. To break up the monotony, I started migrating some of the shiny Pokemon I had caught into more recent games to prep them for the final transfer to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Moving Rayquaza from Pokemon Emerald to Pearl, as you can imagine, was far from straightforward. 
first having to place it in the top row of the PC box one and then transfer it into Pokemon Pearl where I had to visit Pal Park, track it down and then catch it again. The next step would be to move Rayquaza into black and white, but both copies were a bit preoccupied at the moment. So I used my copy of white 2 to transfer Rayquaza on and had the joy of another mini game to help pass the time. Still have no idea why they made the transfer process in these older titles so complicated. Anyway, after transferring into white 2, I can now use Poké Transporter to move it into Pokemon Bank before Rayquaza's final journey into Pokemon Home. By the end of the day, I managed to hit 4,987 encounters across both hunts. We were averaging about 240 encounters per hour, and soon enough, we surpassed 5,000 in total. Honestly, this hunt felt never ending, and while I wanted to bring these hunts onto stream, with a shiny Deoxys hunt and a hard gold soul silver shiny Nuzlocke already filling up the schedule, adding Curum just didn't seem realistic. So I made the decision to continue this hunt off stream in the evenings. This allowed me to get around four hours of resets done most days, which meant around 900 encounters each day. Doing things this way kept things moving forward while still balancing my other commitments. At least during the evenings, I was able to catch up on my long overdue journey through One Piece. After some pressure from the community, I'd finally caved in and started watching it earlier in the year. It turned out to be a huge distraction, but honestly, it made the time pass so much quicker. Probably not the best idea when I should have been focusing on the hunt, but hey, I think it worked out just fine in the end. Yo! <laughs> there it is! There it is! There it is! <laughs> Shiny Curum! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! We got it! We finally got it! This has been such a grind. I never thought we'd actually finish, <laughs> finish the challenge. It looks so good in these games as well. It looks so good. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, what is that combined? 7,867. Just get that master ball. We're not even going to play around. We are just going to lock it in. Finish this. <laughs> this last one that we needed. It's kind of fitting as well. The Curum is the last one that we needed. Oh, this has been a few weeks in the making, this hunt. Oh, I cannot believe it. It looks so good that we finally got a Curum in Pokemon Black as well. Just crazy. That's like my first copy that I ever got of Pokemon Black or White. So really nice. I was thinking it might be the white copy that we'd ran through because this one just seemed so stubborn, but now we finally locked it in and that is that's all of them that is every single one from the indigo disc shiny pokemon ah let's have a look let's see what it looks like in battle against the jinx get those sparkles going the animations in these games i do love there we go let's go shiny curum 7867 encounters and with that, I'd finally caught all 22 shiny legendaries I needed for this challenge, essentially unlocking all of the ones that had been locked in the Indigo Disc. The next day, I moved everything into Pokemon Home, then transferred them into Scarlet and Violet. After just over 300 hours of hunting, this challenge was finally complete. 